A couple of weeks ago, I unboxed one of my favorite two-in-one convertibles so far for this year, the Inspiron 16 two-in-one, the 7620 model, and I really liked it. I liked the display options you got with that, the all-metal design, the 12th gen P-series processor performance was very good, the battery life was very good, a lot to like. I'll leave a link in the description below for those that didn't see it. I highly encourage you to check it out for those that want a 16-inch two-in-one convertible. But I also took delivery of its 14-inch sibling, the Inspiron 14 2-in-1, the 7420 model from Intel's Alder Lake 12th Gen processors. And I gotta say, I've been really impressed with it. Now, it's not perfect. We'll get into exactly what I think could be improved on it. But for the most part, a really nice 14-inch 2-in-1 convertible with a premium design and a price tag that won't break the bank. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Dell Inspiron 14 2-in-1, the 7420, here for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell. I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Dell is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit is on loan from Dell, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing starts at $850. That's for the Core i5 model, but Dell sent over the Core i7 the 1255U, and that one comes in at $1,049.99. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, for those that are interested, there is an AMD variant, the 7415. I already reviewed that one. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. That's a really nice two-in-one as well, especially for those that are looking for that AMD processor. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, Dell sent me the pen to check out. It also works with the Inspiron 16 2-in-1 that I just reviewed. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. But the pen is $40. I'll leave a link for that for those that are interested in buying it. Again, it's a separate purchase. Now, you do get a 65-watt USB-C power adapter. It's really compact, which I like to see. And they also give you the extension cord. And finally, you get some documentation, which includes some warranty information and a setup guide. And of course, you get the unit itself and holding it for the first time. The first thing that comes to mind is a really premium build. It's an all metal design. There's very little flex or give in the chassis. This is something we'd like to see, of course. And at 3.46 pounds or 1.57 kilograms, definitely portable enough to take with you on the go, but certainly not the lightest two-in-one convertible I've reviewed here on this channel, but definitely portable. So that's good. Throw it in the bag. You're ready to rock and roll on the road. And to put its size into perspective, here it is with the Inspiron 16 2-in-1 that I just reviewed. That's the 7620 model. And as you can see, this certainly has a smaller footprint, but very similar in terms of the design itself. But if you want that smaller device that is easier to take with you, a little bit lighter, of course, this is the one to go with. Although that 16 inch is really nice. I did my review on that. I'll leave a link in the description below. For those that didn't see it, I highly encourage you to check it out. It's a good one. All right, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is an HDMI 1.4 port. There are two USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 ports that are full function. They support data, charge, and display out. They are not Thunderbolt 4 ports as opposed to what you get with the Inspiron 16 2-in-1, its bigger brother that I just reviewed. It's something to keep in mind. And moving over to the right side is a full-size SD card reader. And one thing to note, the cards go in as far as you see there. It's not flush with the unit, something to be aware of. You get a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, and finally a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack to round out the ports on this laptop. I would say all in all, a really good port selection, although I would have liked to have seen Thunderbolt 4 ports on this. But again, at this price point, I'm not surprised they did that. Now to get inside this laptop, all you need to do is remove the seven Phillips head screws, pry off the bottom plate, and you're in. And once inside, you'll notice that it has a single fan for cooling. We'll get into the thermals in a little bit, and it also has a 54 watt hour battery. We'll talk about the battery life later on in this review. But as far as what's user upgradable, let's start off with the RAM. There are two RAM slots. It uses DDR4 RAM, and my review unit has 16 gigabytes of that DDR4 RAM running in dual channel mode. 
And as far as the SSD is concerned, my review unit has 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. It's PCIe Gen 3. And these are good reads and writes, as you see here on the Crystal Disk Mark test. But they're not the faster Gen 4 we'd like to see here in 2022. Now, the good news is the storage is expandable by the user. So if you need more storage down the road, you have that option. Now, as far as the wireless is concerned, this has Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.2. Both are working very well. I've had no issues and it's slotted in. That means if you need to change out the Wi-Fi card down the road, that's another option you have as the user. I like that. All right, let's talk about the display and what we're looking at here is a 14 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. That means it has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. That means you'll see more on the display than a 16 to nine aspect ratio. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. We like to see that. Now, as far as this display is concerned, they call it a true life display with very narrow borders and I like the aesthetics of it. So it looks good in that regard. And they also claim 300 nits in terms of brightness. Unfortunately, I didn't get 300 nits. I measured 265 nits below the 300 nit threshold that we'd like to see. So I wish it was a little bit brighter. Although it is a glossy display, it's not too bad in terms of the glare and reflection. So that's been pretty good so far. Now it does have really deep blacks with a 0.23 score. That's really good. We want to see that. And it has a good white point and excellent contrast of a 1050 to one, which I like to see. But as far as the Delta E score, it's a little bit higher than I'd like to see with 3.27, we like to see below two. So it's not the most color accurate display out there, but it's not terrible either, just so you know. Now, as far as the coverage of the color gamut, that's where this fell short as well. Now only the 62% of the sRGB, 46% percent of adobe rgb 46 percent of the dci p3 wide color gamut and 44 percent ntsc so if you're a content creator i would look to its bigger brother the inspiron 16 2 and one that i just took a look at that's a lot better than what we're seeing here but for the 14 inch laptop with this full ac plus display it's going to be good for watching movies netflix amazon and stuff like that but when it comes to color grading photoshop video editing there are better options out there i'm not saying that this is a bad display I'm just saying that this is a decent display that there are better options out there for things that creators want to use it for. And this touchscreen has a touch layer that was very responsive. Navigating through the OS has been great using your fingers. Not too bad. So this is the front facing camera on the brand new Dell Inspiron 14, the two in one here for 2022. It's the 7420 model with the Intel processor. We'll get into performance in a little bit. But as far as this camera is concerned, it's a 1080p camera, which we like to see 30 frames per second. How does the video quality look? How does the audio sound out of the internal mics? I am curious to know. Let me know in that comment section below. Now there is a shutter switch on the physical shutter switch, I should say, on this camera that allows you to turn it off for more security and privacy. I like to see that. Now the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. Setup was easy, works very well, logging in with Windows Hello. Now one thing to note, this camera is not an IR camera. That means you cannot log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Is this good for your Zoom calls? Is this good for your work from home needs? Let me know in that comment section below. And this being a two-in-one convertible means you can put it into the different modes. You've got the tent mode, which is great for consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube. Has been great on this so far. And of course, you could always put it into the stand mode or what I like to call presentation mode, also good for consuming media. And of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode, great for use with the optional pen. And speaking of the pen, as I said earlier, this is a $40 accessory not included with this laptop, so you'll have to pay extra for it. But as far as taking notes and sketching an artwork, it's worked really well so far. I've had no complaints, and it does the job. But of course, there's nowhere to store it on this unit. It doesn't connect magnetically anywhere, so you'll have to find a place in your bag. And for those wondering, no, you can't quite open it up with one finger. The hinges are designed to be a two-in-one convertible, not meant to really be opened with one finger. Having said that, the keyboard is actually pretty good on this. I like it a little bit better, I think, than the 16. For some reason, not as mushy on this one, a little bit more tactility, and the key travel seemed a little bit better. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I actually like this keyboard on this one a little bit better than the 16-inch two-in-one I just took a look at, although that wasn't bad. This seems a little bit better, in my opinion. Now, as far as typing for extended 
extended periods of time. I thought it was comfortable and it does have a multi-stage backlight. Now the keys do light up white against these dark gray keys. So not too bad in terms of seeing it, the contrast, it actually worked okay. And it has a really nicely sized touchpad on this. It's a glass touchpad with precision drivers and the responsiveness was very good. Two finger scrolling was buttery smooth and all the gestures work as you'd expect. All right, let's talk about the processor and performance here. This is running the Core i7-1255U. Now this is a 12th gen processor, of course, with integrated Iris Xe graphics with 96 executional units. And as you can see from these numbers, pretty nice results as you can see in terms of the single core and multi-core results. So that means you can use this for Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, even doing some video editing. I would do 1080p video editing, leave the 4K video editing to something with a discrete GPU, but you can do some light video editing on this without any issues and it will work pretty fine. And to illustrate the difference between the P series and the U series this year, the Dell Inspiron 16 2 and 17620 that I recently reviewed scored 7,448 on the multi core score of the Geekbench 5 test, whereas this one, the 14 inch, did 6,738. Now that did better than the 7415 running that AMD Ryzen 7 5700U processor. That's the one I reviewed a few months back that did 5971. And it goes without saying, this is not a dedicated gaming laptop. That's not what the focus of this laptop was meant to be. But if you do lower some of the settings on some of the more popular titles, you can get somewhat playable frame rates, but really things like Cyberpunk 2077, for example, really are not playable on this laptop, even when you lower the settings, because that is a really graphics intensive game, of course. But other titles such as GTA 5, Dota 2 Reborn, and the like, you will get playable frame rates if you do lower the settings, and you will be able to play the occasional game here and there. And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, it would reach a core temperature of 93 degrees Celsius, and then it will throttle down to around 72, 73 degrees Celsius, lowering the clock speeds to maintain a lower temperature. And I'm a really big fan of the My Dell app, which gives you a nice control over the thermal profiles, cool, optimized, quiet, and of course, ultra performance. And as far as fan noise is concerned, it never got above 49 decibels under the ultra performance mode. But when running it in the optimized mode, it would come in every now and then in terms of fan noise and it would never get overly loud. That's good. And when it comes to surface temperatures under heavy load, it never got overly hot, never too hot to the touch. In fact, it remained relatively cool with a few hot spots here and there. In fact, above the keyboard, as you see here, and on the underside as well, but for the most part, relatively cool. That's always good as well. And when it comes to battery life, it sports a 54 watt hour battery and it did 10 hours and four minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. So in real world mixed usage, you can expect anywhere from eight to nine hours, which is actually pretty good. But please keep in mind, everybody's use case is a little bit different. So your mileage may vary. Now, when you compare it to the 7415 running that AMD Ryzen processor, that did a little bit over 11 hours, about an hour more than what I got on the 7420. So you'll get a little bit more efficiency out of that AMD processor. Uh, not much more, but a little bit more. So something to bear in mind. Now, when it comes to charging, this is included with a 65 watt USB-C power adapter, and it took about an hour and 45 minutes to give you a full charge. Not too bad. And when it comes to audio, this sports stereo speakers with Wave Max Audio for a total of four watts of power. Now, I thought the sound was actually pretty good for a two-in-one convertible. Now, for an example of it, let's give it a listen.
All right, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Dell Inspiron 14 2 in 1 here for 2022? I like a lot of things about this. Let's start with what I like, and then I'll tell you what I'm not so crazy about. I like the fact that it has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, it's a full HD plus IPS display. I like the premium all metal design. I like the good CPU performance out of that 12th gen processor. That U processor was pretty impressive, although not as good as the P series, but pretty good nonetheless. A little bit better than the Ryzen. 7 we saw from last year upgradable ram ssd and wi-fi long battery life out of the 54 watt hour battery the strong hinges allows you to put it into the different modes with li limited screen wobble so that's good 1080p webcam is a really nice improvement here good for your zoom calls and work from home needs i love the fact that it runs cool and quiet there is a pen support on this although the pen is not included it's a separate purchase full-size sd card reader is always welcome and i thought it had a pretty good port selection however there are things i'm not crazy about the fact that the display could be brighter coming in only at 265 nits i'd like to see it above 300 it had limited coverage of the color gamut and it didn't have the best color accuracy it was decent but not great and there is no thunderbolt 4 support on this laptop which you get with the bigger brother the 16 inch version of this uh, two-in-one one convertible but there's a lot to like here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to give this a score of 89%, making the Inspiron 14 2-in-1 here for 2022 definitely worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the 7420? This is the Inspiron 14 2-in-1 convertible, all-metal design, really nice port selection with the caveat that these are not Thunderbolt four ports, these two USB-C ports. Would have liked to have had that, which you like, which you get on the 16-inch model, but not on this 14-inch. Again, cost-saving measure. But nonetheless, these are full function as far as display port out, charging, and of course, data. Now, you get really nice uh, build quality out of this. Like I said, uh, the thermals were very good. The battery life was very good. Out of that 54 watt hour battery, I got over 10 hours on my continuous web surfing test. So you're looking at about anywhere from, I would say eight to nine hours of mixed use, which is pretty good, obviously, uh, to do long-term work on it. You don't necessarily need to, need to take a charger with you. So that's always good. Now, it's not the lightest two-in-one convertible coming in, about a three and a half pounds or so. Uh, again, I would definitely consider this if you want the port selection, you want the upgradability as well. Being able to swap out the RAM, the Wi-Fi, and of course the SSD is always great, especially if your needs change down the road. You can expand those out. I love that. Now, the display. Let's talk about that for a moment. 14 inch full HD plus 1920 by 1200. That's the only display option. Now my gripe with it or my thing that I have with it right now is that it doesn't get bright enough at 265 nits. I would like to see it over 300 nits and it's not the best in terms of the color space as far as the color gamut and it could be a little bit more color accurate but for the everyday user and i want to make this very clear for the everyday user you're going to be fine for watching netflix amazon youtube getting work done on this 16 to 10 display spreadsheets uh, word documents emails web browsing it all worked great on this so you won't have any issues but if you're a content creator look at the 16 inch version because that will have better coverage of the color gamut a little bit better color accuracy and it'll be good for things such as photoshop color grading lightroom and of course video editing now as far as this 12th gen u series processor the core i7 1255u impressive numbers in both a single core and multi-core performance it actually did a little bit better than the 7415 which i reviewed which had the ryzen 7 5700u i reviewed that one i'll leave a link in the description below that was a few months back but it'll give you a nice uh, comparison between the two between the amd from last year and what you can expect from the U series from Intel this year. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think about the 7420? I think it's a nice 14 inch two in one convertible. It's got a nice price tag with a good starting price of under $1,000. So it's a really good price to performance ratio. Again, I want to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.